Earth 2022. We're here, and this is Yvonne. Hey guys. This is a Prusa with a fourth and fifth axis, right? Yes, indeed. Why, how, where, what makes this go? Okay, so the work is um, from Freddie Hong. It's a PhD student in Imperial College London. And as part of his research, he decided to build a five axis 3D printer. So here are two extra axes. So um, this is the gantry that we uh, built into the, to the Y axis. And essentially you have the U axis, which enables rotation like this, and then the V axis. So these are, these are the names we use. Uh, but there we go. So then this, this is the U axis right here. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Which and is then... driven from a stepper motor behind here. Oh, behind here. Yeah, so if you, you can check it out here on the machine. And that's the V axis that's, the v that's axis, spinning. So we've got X, Y, Z or Z, U and V. Yeah, an extruder. An extruder, that's right, yeah, okay. <laughs> that makes sense. In order to put that, that U and that V axis on the 3D printer, you had to actually cat up some parts and do some design work, right? Yeah, yeah. so the, yeah, um, we had to basically redesign the whole Y axis and fit the whole gantry in there. And then obviously we need more uh, drivers, so we have um, the DeWitt boards on, on board, which allow us to control the SR2. Uh, oh, that makes sense, the because the Prusa board isn't going to be able to control extra axes, exactly. right? And then with, with creating this, this fourth and fifth axis on the Prusa machine, you do lose some build volume. You do, you do. Because uh, basically you step, yeah, you, you lose mostly on the set axis, because you have to step, raise the whole uh, bed quite up to, in order to have the, the U. Right. And, and the V as well, so yeah, you lose a bit, but then you can get a bit creative, I think, uh, with all the rotations and, you know, figure out uh, some cool geometry. It is really neat because there's going to be geometries that you can create mm. here that just aren't possible yeah, I mean, on other 3D printers without this, right? This is incredible, and part of what makes this insane is just the print quality. This looks amazing. No, and yeah, no support, uh, excellent finish, and, and you know, you can do multi-material stuff as well. Um, Stuff like oh, this. this is beautiful uh, right here. This too, so, so something like this is on, on this mechanism, uh -huh. and then to do these, exactly. it tilts, and then it prints it's like the this. The U-axis, and then it just figures out four axes move at the same time, and they build the layers sequentially on top. Wait, you use this term, figures it out. Now, I would imagine that's awfully complex, because when yes. I think about slicing for a 3D printer, we've got almost slices of yeah. paper on a Z or Z axis, exactly. right? Now, how do you slice for okay. something like this? Yes, so we have a custom Grasshopper script. Uh, grasshopper? Yeah. What is Grasshopper? So Grasshopper is a plugin for Rhino. It's a node-based sort of way of uh, cutting. Oh. Yeah, so it, it's built in there. <laughs> um, the, the, so the whole project is open, open source. The only part that's not fully open source is the Grasshopper script, because Rhino is not open source, because you need to pay a license. That's why we want the community to get involved and, and hopefully develop some cool tools. One of the things I want to show you, I just, I just saw this on the laptop because Yvonne was showing me. This is the slicer. So it's a grasshopper script within Rhino. And when we typically think of a 3D printer slicer, um, Prusa Slicer, uh, Simplify 3D, uh, Ultimaker, uh, take your pick. But if that's the slicer <laughs> right here. It's a huge definition of a lot of things. We compute all the kinematics, uh, all the heavy work is done there. Uh, you basically take the normal of the surface relative to a point, and then you compute the inverse kinematic to that. And then that okay. outputs two rotational values for the U and the V axis, plus also the X, Y, and the Z. That's uh, crazy, though. It's pretty crazy, it's... and it's quite computa computationally expensive. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. And, and you did mention, it's open source. It's this open is, source. look at this, this is a QR code. Right here, right? Exactly. And this is where people can just go and read you, about you it and find, download uh, the parts? And yes, so there's four. The first one is the GitHub repo, where you can find all a bit of materials. You can find the Grasshopper script we use. Everything is there. Um, then we have um, a research paper that we published recently on the Open5x, the whole environment. If you want to know more the nuances of the kinematics mm. or the slicing, it's all there. Um, and then we've got a YouTube channel. We've got some more five-axis uh, demos. And we've got assembly guides. So make sure to check that out. And then fourthly, we just have um, the department, uh, the Dyson School of Design Engineering, where all the research is happening. Uh, yeah, that, that's, that's the... Well, we'll, I mean, we'll, we'll click this. We'll put the link down in the description, Perfect. but just in case people can <laughs> scan their screen. Okay, this is open source. People have the, the GitHub and the YouTube, the builds, uh, all of that. But now, will they be able to take advantage of it without that Grasshopper script 
that you talked about? Well, um, we want them to experiment, uh, and, and the, the only way this can go forward is with community. We need to build a community around it. We need to build a demand for software to exist, uh, so that is an in incentive for, for people to start working on this and, and make it more accessible. Uh, that's the whole point of five, Open 5X, is to make 5X more accessible. So, yeah, we need a community behind it. That's why we are here, to show people, to uh, <laughs> and hopefully build a... Uh, interest and, and that uh, demand for it. So well, this is the perfect place for it. And like he said, open source. It means that the challenge is out to you and everybody else out there to download the files, go to the GitHub, watch the YouTube, build their own Open exactly. 5x, and maybe the Grasshopper script isn't the last word. And there will be other options to be hopefully. able to slice yes, and hopefully. invert normals and <laughs> make all sorts of cool stuff on this. If you've watched it this far, you're awesome. And and typically, what I do to my audience is I offer them a high five at the end. Okay. Are you up for it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. For sure. If you made this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. Find links in the description. And as always, high five. Uh,